and it's up to the voters now and I mean that's the process here and I think a lot of the conversation that we've had over the last couple of years is like you got to trust the voters don't get lazy don't feel like this is in the bag get out there and, and make your make your voice heard because that's how we win Deciding 2022, millions of people lining up today to vote in the midterm elections. And you are taking a live look right now from the polls at Bowser High School. So far, more than 100,000 voters have cast ballots here in Lucas County. The, the polls close here in Ohio at 730. If you're in Michigan, you have until 8. We have live team coverage for you on this election night here. The WTOL 11 team is spread out all over Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. Chase Bachman and Kaylee Kirby, they are going to be joining us here in just a little bit, along with Kaylee Marintet and Dan Cummins as well, breaking down some of those races as we head into these final hours. But first, we want to check in with Michael Sandlin live in studio here tonight. Michael, keeping a close eye on the turnout for us here in Lucas County. That's right, Jeff. And according to the director of the Lucas County Board of Elections, Lavera Scott, this year we're seeing a massive turnout. With over 122,000 votes in already and still an hour and a half to go, Scott tells me that the number of voters is expected to exceed the last midterm election and could rival some presidential elections. Scott says she believes that the higher turnout is due to increased awareness from the public that local elections can create change. And Scott says so far today voting has been a mostly smooth process, but it hasn't been without its hiccups. Depending on where you are in the counting, there can be over 23 issues for residents to vote on. And Scott says reading through it all is taking people longer to vote in than previous elections, causing long lines at certain polling stations. And there have been some reported issues with scanning electronic, with scanning electronic ballots, but Scott says they guarantee every vote will be counted. And, but the good thing is, is we always have a contingency plan. We have paper backup books at every polling location. We've had some polling locations stated that they were running on ballots. We've ran additional ballots. We have not ran out anywhere, but we do have precautions in place. And those polling stations officially close at 730. But if you get in line before that time, Scott says you'll be allowed to stay in line and cast your vote. Reporting in studio, I'm Michael Sanon, WTOL 11. Issue 21 has been one of the most talked about on the ballot for Toledo voters. Chase Bachman talked to Toledoans about this measure, which is a mixed bag of 12 changes to city ordinances. He joins us live from the Lucas County Board of Elections in West Toledo tonight. Chase, what are voters saying about this? Well, Mel, issue 21 has a lot of provisions in that measure, but one of the most notable is the extension of mayoral term limits from two to three. Now, we talked with Toledo voters outside the early vote center late last week. They actually said that they oppose the issue, many of them saying that, despite the ability to use capital funds to improve roads, ending a city residency requirement for employees, they say they approve of the job current Mayor Wade Kapsikavich is doing, but disagree with longer terms on principle. Local leaders have even spoke out against the issue. Katie Moline, an at-large member of Toledo City Council said combining so many unrelated issues is deceiving. This is bad policy and it's even furthered because I think it's been deceptive the whole time by you know lumping so many charter amendments and so many charter changes into one bill is really deceptive to the Toledo voters and that's why I voted against it, why I tried to amend it. Now, we reached out to the mayor's office late last week for comment on the issue. A spokesperson told WTOL 11 they provided a statement from Mayor Wade saying that they are touting the provision, which uses capital funding to improve roads, saying it is a bargain too good to pass up. Reporting live in West Toledo, Chase Bachman, WTOL 11. Well, one of those races here in Ohio that has had the eyes of the nation is for the U.S. Senate between Democrat Tim Ryan and Republican J.D. Vance. Both men were seen voting early this morning. Ryan and Vance are in the running to replace U.S. Senator Rob Portman after he decided not to run for re-election. Our team coverage continues tonight with Kaylee Marantet and Dan Cummins. Both are keeping a close eye on the race for Ohio's 9th Congressional District. Longtime Democratic Representative Marcy Kaptur facing off against Republican newcomer J.R. Majewski. Let's first check in with Kaylee, who is at the UAW Local 12 in Central Toledo with the Kaptur campaign. What's the party saying tonight, Kaylee? 
Yeah, Melissa, the Democratic Party is excited for what's to come tonight. There are going to be some members here from the Lucas County Democratic Party. The final touches are being put up. This party watch party does start at 7 o'clock tonight. Next year, Marcy Kaptur will be celebrating 40 years in Congress. She's the longest serving woman in the U.S. House. We got the chance to speak to her in an event last week to talk about what she wants to do if she's reelected. She says first to progress the economy and environmental protections. We also asked why she thinks voters should check the box next to her name this year. I would ask for the people's support in order to continue our important work to make the economy in our region rebound more quickly, to make sure that everyone's included, not just the billionaire class and the hundreds of millions of dollars class, but working people that go to work every day and struggle for a living. We'll be staying here throughout the night until this race is called, bringing the latest updates on online and on air. Reporting live in Central Toledo, Kaylee Maritette, WTOL 11. Kaylee, thank you. Congresswoman Marcy Cantor is running against J.R. Majewski. Our Dan Cummins joins us live from downtown Toledo. That is a Republican viewing party he is at for Majewski at the old Cock and Bull Bar in downtown Toledo. So, Dan, talk a little bit about the atmosphere heading into this one and how people see this playing out tonight. Well, candidates will come drifting in and out. J.M. Rajewski is spending the evening, he told us, on Friday with family and friends to see how the evening plays out. We might see him tonight, but I know other candidates will be here possibly tonight as well. You know, J.R. Majewski has never run for election before, but back in 1982, Marcy Kather never run for election, and she is now the longest serving woman in U.S. House history. Now, is she vulnerable? Yes, she is. Joe Biden's approval rating is 28%. Inflation's out of control. Uh, crime is out of control. She voted for the Build Back Better bill, the Inflation Reduction Act. J.R. Majewski hopes that that resentment toward the White House that trickles down to the House and the Senate will help get him elected tonight. I care about Northwest Ohio issues. But the unfortunate thing is those national issues have transcended into uh, local issues. And we're all being in, impacted by inflation. We're all being impacted by crime. We're all being impacted by drugs. And um, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but when you get past that, uh, that's when we drive into the local issues that have been plaguing us here. And that's the economy, uh, that's small business development, that's our kids, that's our school systems, fentanyl. Some people I've talked to say Marcy Kaptur has never spent the kind of money she spent this election to be reelected because of her concern over J.R. Majewski and that possible red wave coming up tonight. Reporting downtown, Dan Cummins, WTOL 11. Here's something else we're going to be tracking tonight. Voters today deciding on who will be governor for the next four years in Ohio. Republican Mike DeWine looking to be reelected for a second term. Former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley looking to become the first Democrat in that office since Ted Strickland was there back in 2011. And Michigan voters are also deciding who will be the next governor of the state. Incumbent Governor Democrat Gretchen Whitmer is running to keep her seat against Republican challenger Tudor Dixon. Dixon said today she feels good about her chances of becoming Michigan's next governor. Also in Michigan tonight, voters have three state issues on the ballot, including Proposal 3, which addresses reproductive rights after the Roe v. Wade decision by the U.S. Supreme Court back in June. Tatiana Cash live in Adrian tonight with more on this. Tatiana. That's right. So Proposal 3 would be an amendment to the Michigan State Constitution. And what it says, if passed, is that Michigan would regulate abortion in specific cases. Also, when it comes to those looking for abortion, it would stop prosecution for those looking to get the abortion and those assisting anyone receiving the abortion. And then also, we're allowing here in Michigan, you're going to be allowed to get an abortion even if you are not a resident of this state. Now, Ballot Proposal 3 is actually an initiative petition. So what it is is that a group uh, called Reproductive Freedom for All gathered and submitted more than 750,000 signatures from registered Michigan voters to get this put on the general election ballot. And then when we spoke with folks earlier last week, they said that they are kind of split when it comes to whether to be for or against this decision. Women should have access to help, to the, like, the health care that they need. You know, and I feel like really men in general shouldn't really have an opinion on this. I think that they should probably keep it to themselves. To me, 
a baby's life is important. And although there are very, very tragic situations, um, terrible things that happen and all of that, it does not change the fact that um, life begins at conception. So again, ballot proposal three is about reproductive rights. Uh, Michigan voters, of course, voting right now here at the Lucas County Fairgrounds. Uh, we will see basically if it's going to go one way or the other later on. Of course, polls are open all the way up until 8 o'clock. Uh, live here in Adrian, Tatiana Cash, WTOL 11. And staying in Michigan, there are other statewide proposals on the ballot. Proposal one would change the state constitution to extend term limits for the state house and Senate. Proposal two Michiganders have been voting on this one today would guarantee nine days of early voting and require state funded postage for absentee ballots. And another statewide race we're keeping a close eye on is, of course, the gubernatorial race. We will be watching all of these throughout the night.